Salivary gland cancer recurrences. Why do they occur? I'm Dr. Bob Aklarian from Center for Advanced Parotid and Facial Nerve Surgery. A very good question. A uh, very important and vital question when you're dealing with a parotid cancer. So, there are 20 different types of parotid cancers that can occur. And they all have different kinds of personalities, different creatures. Some grow very slowly, like ascinic cell carcinoma. Sorry, ascinic cell carcinoma. Some are very rapid, mycoepidermoid, high-grade mycoepidermoid, malignant mixed tumors. They tend to grow rapidly. They, you have to get on them quickly and make sure you address them. Their genetics are different. Their nature is different. So each of them will do things in a little bit of a different way. Some like going, spreading to the lymph nodes. Others tend to like to be local or spread to other parts of the body. Now, Tumors in the product can be superficial to the facial nerve, right? With this tumor being superficial to it. They can be deep to the facial nerve, sorry. So you can see superficial, then now deep to it with a nerve going over it, or the tumor can wrap around it where all you see is just the nerve going into the tumor and branches coming out from the other side. Now, tumors tend to have little legs, microscopic little legs. And as you're doing surgery, if you get too close and you amputate these legs, this is the mark of the surgery. If you amputate these legs, those little legs in time can grow and become tumors. So their recurrence isn't act true in the sense that it didn't recur it was there and it just grew in time to show itself uh, some tumors have liked to go from the primary site in the product to the lymph nodes in the neck so if you know that's the nature of your particular cancer you have to address the lymph nodes in the neck otherwise the tumors will recur in that area right um, so knowing the nature of the tumor the, the pathology of the tumor really has an impact on how you address that particular cancer. Some tumors are aggressive and you have to take a lot. So if this is the tumor, you have to take a lot of normal tissue around it to avoid those little legs. Some tumors are not so aggressive. So the amount of tumor, normal salivary tissue you have to take is less, right? So ascinic cells are less aggressive. The extent of excision can be smaller. Mucoepidermoid, high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma is very aggressive. Malignant mix is very aggressive. You have to try to take more. Now, we, generally speaking, we don't try to sacrifice facial nerve branches if they're functioning. But if we see the tumor eating through it, then we will have we have no choice but to remove it. But in the majority of cases, when the nerve is functioning, we're able to save that particular branch of nerve, and 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 make the nerve function properly and still give good outcomes for the patients, right? Because in a lot of these cases, the surgery has to be followed by radiation treatment, sometimes with immunotherapy and, and chemotherapy based on the aggressiveness of the tumor. But the recurrences have to do with the nature and genetics of the tumor, with the little legs, and the ability to get an adequate margin of normal healthy tissue around the tumor so that we can eradicate the disease. Hopefully this is helpful. If you do find this helpful, please push the like button so we know what type of videos we can make for you in the future. And please subscribe. Have a wonderful day and be well.